Hi again. So last week we discussed about synthetic data generation and how could that be used for privacy concerns. This week uh, we will actually go to do some synthetic data generation with a library called Synthetic Data Vault. The Synthetic Data Vault uh, is a library by um, it's started at MIT, and this library is like an open source ecosystem of different things which can be used to generate synthetic data, not just generate, but also test uh, how good the generated data is. And as we have, uh, as we discussed last time, that synthetic data can not just be used for privacy reason, but also for data augmentation and testing the databases. So this library could also be used for those purposes. And an interesting feature of this library is that it has a range of models ranging from your classical models like Gaussian Coppolas to you know, more recent and more modern methods like GANs, uh, which can be used to generate synthetic data. Not just that, it also caters to different kinds of data sets. So it caters to a single table like data set. So you have a CSV file with different columns, it can generate synthetic data. It can also generate uh, synthetic data for time series. And last but not least, uh, we know in many companies, the data sets are not single tables or single time series, but they are databases with different tables which are linked together with some primary keys. So Synthetic Data Vault also uh, learns these relationships and also can generate synthetic databases which have different tables inside. And in this notebook, we are going to demonstrate these features. So we are going to show you some basic usage of this library. We won't go too deep into how these methods work or what these methods are, but just a gentle introduction to the method. So we're going to start with uh, a Gaussian copula, uh, a simple model to generate synthetic data, and then uh, make some modifications to that model. Then we'll move on to GAN. And lastly, we'll show you uh, briefly a multiple table or a database itself. So starting this library is pretty simple. We're going to use open stop. And this library comes with uh, a lot of demo data sets. So you can get a list of demo data sets using this simple line of code. There are around uh, 27, 28 of them. And uh, some of them are short, some of them are from millions of rows, some of them are different tables. So let's look at uh, the census data set. So census data set is a simple data set. We load that along with the metadata. The metadata is very simple uh, in this case. So there's only one table called census. There's no relationships to that. Uh, let's look at the first few rows of this data set. Uh, there are 41 columns, a lot of columns. It has things like age, industry code, or like what is the education of the worker, or what's the wage band, which country uh, the worker belongs to. Uh, let's look at, look at the various columns. The 41 columns are like these for things like what is the major occupation, race, Hispanic, origin, member of the uh, labor union. Your part time employment side, etc. Et and uh, to generate synthetic data with STV is actually very simple. So, first, let's say we want to use this Gaussian Coppola method for generating synthetic data. We import that and we create an object, uh, we create a variable of that object, or we create an object of the class set, and then fit this data to that class. So, I've used only 1000 rows just to keep things simple. You can uh, increase the number of rows. And uh, we load this data set. An important point which I actually forgot to mention here is that if you look at the type of what is the type of this data, it is a uh, pandas data frame. So you can do a simple read CSV from pandas and load your own data set into this notebook and try the different models. And if you're interested, so you fit this model, it takes a bit of time. And after fitting that model, you can just do a sample. So I just am trying to get 10, 10 samples from this data set. So these are the 10 samples here. Not just that, you can add conditions to what kind of samples you can get or you want to get. So I add a simple condition here that all the sam all the samples that I want to get, the Hispanic origin should be Cuban. Right? So I get this uh, data set for all, all the Cuban now, or for all the Cuban uh, Hispanic origin. In, in this data set. And you can do different things here, like you can, you can see what, what is the average wage for this category, what is the average 
uh, management status uh, for this category very much data and things like that. You can have different kind of uh, conditions. Not just that, you know, uh, it also tells you what all distributions are kind of fitted onto the data. So these are different data. It also tries to fit the different kind of distributions in one variable. And you can actually force uh, SDV to fit only one kind of distribution to your data. So which for R is actually a Gaussian distribution usually because of various of Gaussian. But you know there is also a minimum weight, so I think truncated Gaussian would be a better distribution to model weight for that. <clears throat> so I can force the model to use truncated Gaussian for that. And it is as simple as before. So you can uh, fit create a model and fit a model using the same data, but with a different constraint. Similarly, other uh, models uh, are also easy to use. For example, the CDGAN is the same thing. So import the CDGAN model, and then you can train it for how many epochs you want. I just train it for 10 epochs, so that's quick. <coughs> and then you can fit the model. Generating sample is the same as before. So no matter how complicated the intermodal problem is, the interface the memory is pretty simple. And in the end, let's look at an example of a relational database. So we load another data set, which is the Walmart data set. Let's load it here. And let's visualize it. So you see there are three different tables in this data set. So one is your stores table, then is your features table, and then there's a departments table. Features and departments are child tables. <coughs> this is your main table, the parent table. And they have different uh, primary keys and different features, uh, different uh, variables in each of these tables and everything. <coughs> now, SDV has this hierarchical modeling algorithm. What it does, it models the relationship between different tables and recursively applies tabular models. Now, again, like using this is as simple as before. You import this model and then you create an object of this model. And then you fit that object with the model model data. To sample, again, you do the same thing. You sample it, and this time, instead of uh, you just specify how many number of rows you want. So let's get 10 rows of it. And let's have a look at the data. So it returns this dictionary of three tables. And you see that each of these three tables are the three tables in the original data set. And each of them have 10 rows. This is how you can use uh, uh, synthetic data work for a relational database also. So these are simple examples of the use of the library. We haven't got a depth of any of these uh, methods, but feel free to use this notebook and uh, edit your own data sets. So you can use your own uh, data sets here by exporting them to CSV and you know and adding a simple pandas that read CSV and try these models. For you. That's, I encourage you to do that. And if you run into any problems and if you have any suggestions, you can feel free to reach out to me. Hope you find it useful. Thank you.